cut that part out. That is an Indo spinning cover. Oh, look at him, look at look him. Look at him. This is the spinning cover that Dave and I walked right on almost. It's hooded up, which is absolutely amazing. And what he's doing right now is spitting at a goose. Now I am a little bit too close to this guy, but what we've got here is we've got Dave on this side, we've got a goose on this side. And the reason that we're doing that is because at any time this guy can turn around and he's gonna spit venom. And when he showers you with venom, he's going right for your eyes because it'll temporarily blind you. Now what's interesting is spitting cobras will not make you permanently blind. You can use some sort of benign fluid like water or even milk but don't start using chemicals in your eyes to get it out. This is the most amazing animal that I've ever been this close to. I've never thought that I'd be able to see a cobra so close. Whoa, 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 Adam. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. I am a little bit too close to this guy, and I think that if he were to shower me with venom, that would be all over me. I think he just missed me just now, but you can see how quick these animals can just turn around and make me scream like a little girl. So. I think we're gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna walk away from him and leave him in his natural habitat, which by the way, is about 13 steps from the room I'm sleeping in. That's right. A little bit unsettling, but maybe the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in person. This is a spitting cobra. Now the reason that I was so nervous around that snake and the reason that I hightailed it out of there because although he probably wouldn't bite me, and even if he spit at me, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. This isn't a lapid. This isn't something like a white lip viper where you're gonna live. This thing is potentially fatal. So if you get bit and we're in the middle of nowhere and there's no medical attention, that could be the last time you're ever touching a snake is when it touches you. So respect the lapids. Their venom is no joke. It's systematic. It's gonna go through you and it's gonna start destroying your organs. Spinning cobras are so cool and I'm so glad they had the opportunity to see one that close. found in a bush here is an oriental rat snake and the reason I'm not handling this thing well now he's gonna make me a liar but they are very squirmy these are colubrids and they act like colubrids which means they're not a ball python this animal's not gonna sit and watch a movie with you it's gonna be striking and puffing and it's gonna be moving all over the place and I want to make sure that I can concentrate on talking to you about this beautiful snake now these things are found all over this island and they're found all over Southeast Asia too or similar species because rat snakes are basically all over the world. So this animal is going to eat just that, rats. These animals eat rodents. This is an adult sized animal. And the thing that's really cool about him is he's got that beautiful coloration on its head and the scales look a little bit different than the rest of the body. Kind of a little bit of iridescence in the sun also. And overall, just one of the coolest snakes that we found here on Bali. the first day in Bali and the first thing that we're gonna do is go find a king cobra and right now I've got a drone on a nest so that nest is in frame right now that's exactly what you're looking at as I'm talking and we're trying to find this cobra and it's got to be around here somewhere because the thing with cobras is they have this maternal instinct and that means just like crocodiles and alligators do they will guard the nest fiercely so we have a team of people here and we have to be very careful because if that mom wants to protect her nest that is a very quick very large animal and they are not afraid to strike so be respectful of this snake and come with me and we're going to go find a king cobra on the first day that we land in Indonesia it smells like day oh well or Bigfoot, but what's the difference? That is that is true, that is true. Me and Bigfoot and King Cobras have the exact same pheromones. See it? these guys to bring this snake out of the nest. We're not gonna disturb her for too long, but this is a king cobra. And this is a real big king cobra too. This is a full-size female. She laid eggs maybe a month ago, and now she's sitting on the nest. So what we did is we took her out of the nest, which is in between those bamboo shoots there. Those bamboo trees basically is what they are. And we've got Dave filming on that side, right in her face. I'm at a safe distance because this animal, not only is it big, it's a fixed fang snake. This snake is very quick. It has no 
issue coming at you with an open mouth and its fangs just straight out. And if you get bit by one of these things as far into the jungle as we are, that is it. Lights out, it's over. There's no way that you're coming back from that. So I am staying as far away as possible. And I am with one of the best snake catchers in the entire world. And we're gonna do an entire video about why this gentleman does what he does even though his brother is no longer here because of that exact animal. This is really unnecessary. We've got the best snake catcher in the world holding this snake and I'm just holding it for the sake of holding it. And I've always wanted to tickle a king cobra tail. This animal is not close enough to me. It's wrapped around this tree and I'm out of here if it goes the other direction. We've got Dave Kaufman here as well. And Dave, you also tickled this guy I on, his, certainly did. on his butt. What did his butt feel like to you? I, it's undescribable. I mean, I've handled thousands and thousands of snakes all over the world. But when you know that you're actually touching and feeling a wild king cobra, there is no feeling like it in the world. It's interesting because I'm holding this animal, I'm shaking almost, yeah. and this thing is looking directly at me. And I've never thought I would feel safe touching this thing. But then when you got a crew like Bali Reptile Rescue and all of these people around who know exactly what they're doing, this is a surreal experience and something I never thought I'd ever get to do in my life. And just to be clear, we're not just doing this for the sake of doing this so that I can show you a video, as cool as it is. The reason that we do that is because in this country, if we're near someone's land, a farmer, or whoever, if Bali Reptile Rescue doesn't come out when they're called in order to come get this snake, it's gonna be decapitated. They will destroy the snake, they'll destroy the nest. So in order to preserve the species, you need as much data as, can, as possible, and that's what they're doing right here. The reason that they're grabbing the head like this is because we need to measure the snake. And the only safe way to do that is to grab the snake with these gloves that are bite-proof gloves, and this, again, is the best cobra handler in the entire world. We're gonna dig up this nest and we're gonna incubate these eggs elsewhere because if we don't, someone's gonna light this nest on fire and we're gonna relocate the snake to somewhere where there's gonna be no humans and no way that someone's going to go and destroy the snake. So my guess is that we're gonna have 30 eggs. We're guessing around, Dave, what was your guess? I'm gonna do 25. 25? So we're gonna guess 25 for Dave, 30 for me. Who's ever closer yep. gets to decide what the punishment is. Whoever's closer gets to decide what the punishment is. Okay, that's fair. All right. All right, you got it. There better be 25 in there. There's 30 eggs in there. So this is egg number 17. I guess 30, there's a lot left. So what we're doing is we're taking these eggs and just like at home with a ball python egg, you take it exactly where it is, you don't move it, you put it back in this pile of leaves exactly like that. And because the embryo, if you were to flip it, it can actually drown. In the amniotic fluid, it could drown. So now I put 17 out here. I'm gonna trade places with Dave so Dave can have, because this is honestly the coolest thing ever. I am touching cobra eggs in the wild in Indonesia with my fingers. This is the most insane thing I've ever got to do. And then we're gonna take these, we're gonna incubate them artificially. We're gonna take mama and we're gonna put her in the west where there's gonna be very few humans and very little opportunity for someone to destroy that animal. At the end of the day, we're trying to make sure that we can proliferate the species as much as we possibly can. And with lots of king cobras come lots of penguins too. It's amazing what Bali Reptile Rescue is doing. Dave, get the heck in here, buddy. Behind me, you can hear the ocean waves crashing. And to my left, this is hundreds, thousands of bats. And as they go out, Reticulated pythons are going to reach out with their very long teeth and their very long range and they're going to be able to grab them. This is where you find reticulated pythons in Indonesia on the island of Bali. I am so lucky to be here. Let's take a look at these bats. So now the sun is completely gone and what a beautiful sunset it was. And there is no light except for the artificial kind with Dave, which I appreciate. And also it's nice because he's like a boom because he's eight feet off the ground. So this is perfect. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in because if you see right here, these are reticulated pythons in the wild. These are full-fledged reticulated pythons. The one that you've seen me talk about at Garrett's place in Pittsburgh and the ones that you've seen me talk about in the top five videos, but right here in Bali next to the ocean, they're in a cave which is atopped by a temple. The most magical place I've ever been, and now Dave and I are gonna go get rained on by bat poop and look at retics, because they're gonna eat the bats. And I, I think Robin's in there too, right? Robin's in there. Okay, let's Batman's go see. Batman's in there, and now there's gonna be a Dave and Adam in there. Alfred will be right there. Yeah.
This is what I came here to see. On this island, there is one pit viper like this. And this is a white lip pit viper. What's really interesting about these animals is that although this is not a full grown animal, they don't get super big and they don't need to. These animals are gonna eat small rodents and they have a venom inside of them that although not lethal to humans probably, I'm staying far enough away that I'm respecting the snake and I do not want it to bite me. It also has pits, which is why it's a pit viper, so it can sense my heat signature. So I'm staying far enough away that if it thought I was food for any reason or had any interest in me, I'm not gonna be close enough to it. It has this amazing red tail, it has this amazing green color, and of course the white lips, that is why it's called the white lip viper. What's interesting with snakes like this is you wouldn't wanna do this standard care where you wrap the wound and you make sure that the, the venom doesn't move around. You want this venom to move around because it's necrotic. And what that means is if you've ever seen a snake bite in the pictures and the thumb or the hand starts to go black, that's necrosis. So this animal is going to basically kill the tissue with the venom in, near the injection site. So you want it to move around as much as possible to get away from that tissue site because it's not gonna damage your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, any organs like that as much as something like an elapid. So very different treatment for a snake like this. So what we found here with uh, Dave Coffin, who's my uh, tailing guy here, this is a vine snake. So the thing with Asian vine snakes is they are mildly venomous, but they are rear fang venomous. So that means I'm not super worried about getting bit, but at the same time, I don't like getting bit by snakes and this snake doesn't want to bite me. The only reason that it's in this posture right now is because we're holding it like this. We found it in a tree and by we, I mean the guides that we have because it's almost impossible to find these. They are so blended in to the trees that they're in and I have never seen a vine snake this big ever. If you see one of these in captivity, it it probably won't be this big. And what's very interesting is their eyes. You've seen the meme, the skeptical snake eyes. That's this snake exactly. These guys are going to eat frogs. They're gonna eat lizards. So they don't have a heat pit like you'd see with a, a, a python or something like that. They're not heat seeking. They don't need to. And they stick that tongue out kind of straight, which is really interesting. And they look super menacing. But at the end of the day, they're just really big sweethearts. That's absolutely correct. And this guy is making a really good living out here eating lizards and frogs, and you can just see how big and robust and beautiful this snake is. He is eating well and living large out here. So what's cruising away from me right here, this is a bronze back snake, or as Dave called it, the never get skunk snake, because you always find these guys. They're not venomous, but at the end of the day, I don't really want to bug this guy too much. We've already been kind of messing with him, and he's been in a tree. I think he's one of the cooler snakes that we can find on this island. I got there we go. You. Okay, that's yeah. why I bring Dave to yeah, places. Yeah, right, right. I'm your, I'm your snake handler. That's right. So, hey, so just... There you go. Oh, okay. wow. Or not. Uh, Apparently, I'm not a good snake handler. Now, these and snakes, they are lizard eaters, which I find really cool because we find things like pythons. We were talking about pythons earlier in that bat cave where Batman wasn't present, unfortunately. These guys don't have a heat pit. They're a colubrid, and these animals are going to be in the trees, which is where we found this guy in the first place. Something I find really cool with the very bronze back, even though he's in shed, just like Dave said, it's still he still has that amazing type of coloration. And one of the cooler snakes you can find on Bali, even though they're kind of like Southeast Asia's garter snake. They're basically everywhere. Here in Indonesia, one of the coolest things are these striped keelbacks. And the reason is, although they're very common, they're very unique. This is kind of like a Southeast Asian garter snake type thing. And the reason is, well, that's what they were called is Indonesian garter snakes. They kind of have a similar type pattern, similar type look. The iridescence, kind of how shiny they are, is a little bit different to me. And they have a similar type of diet as well. They're gonna be lizard eaters and they're gonna be frog eaters. They're gonna be mostly terrestrial, so they're gonna be cruising around for food on the ground. You're not gonna have to look in the trees for these guys. You're gonna find these with a light looking super shiny on the ground right next to your boots. And the cool thing is, I was told they never bite, but you guys know that I always knock on wood because when you say that, that's when you get bit by snakes, but not this one. His name is Frank and he's my friend. We're gonna <laughs> let him go now. What we've got here is a retake. Dave was just walking through. Whoa! <laughs> and that's the thing with reticulated pythons is these animals, although they look like they're far away from you, they're long. This is the longest snake in the entire world. This is the exact same snake that we found in that cave. The only difference is this thing is two feet away from me. And if he wants to strike me, he can. So I have to be ready to move back and these animals, although they are not venomous, they are going to be able to lacerate you because their teeth are not shaped like Burmese python teeth. Although you can find berms on this island, 
The reticulated pythons are gonna be more arboreal, they're gonna be more slender, they come in a bunch of different morphs in captivity, but in the wild, they have one of the coolest colorations, the coolest patterns, and their teeth are triangular shaped which means if you don't go with the bite, they will rip your flesh and it's gonna be a bad time. This animal does not wanna hurt me, it just does not wanna get hurt. And because I am posing as a threat to it, it is posing as a threat to me and it's working because I do not wanna get bit by this guy and he does not wanna get eaten by me. This is one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in the wild looking for reptiles here on Bali, Indonesia. Look at this animal right here. So here I am holding a venomous snake without a hook. Sort of. This is a rear fang venomous snake. It's a dog tooth cat snake. And the reason that they call them that is because they've got dog teeth on them. Because it's not really dog teeth. It, it kind of looks like dog teeth and they've got a rear fang venom. So very similar to say like a hognose snake, but more similarly to maybe a mangrove snake, which occur in the very similar type areas to where we're at right now, Southeast Asia. They're placid, they're beautiful. The only reason that they would lash out, lash out at you or attack you is because they want to get away from you. And this is a perfect example of how snakes act if you treat them gentle and with respect. Dog tooth cats. So Dave found this really, <laughs> this really cool wolf snake. And the reason that they're called wolf snakes is because they've got these really large teeth in comparison to their body. For animals like this, for, animal, for snakes like this in this family, generally when you get bit, it's kind of like whatever. And I'm hearing Dave get bit and kind of saying something or making a noise. And that's just because they've got bigger teeth for something that's this size. Now they're not venomous at all, so they're not gonna hurt you. I'm just not holding them because I don't like getting bit by snakes. It doesn't matter, It doesn't. there's no point of it. And also, you're just gonna kind of upset him. Once you handle a snake for a certain amount of time, they get a little bit over it rather quickly. Now these are more of a terrestrial snake. We're just coming up on sunset right now. So you're gonna see that snakes start coming out around this time. And that's why we're here right now at about five o'clock. It gets dark at about quarter to six. So this is the time when you're gonna find these guys cruising around looking for food. We're in an abandoned amusement park as I've said a hundred times. So nothing's here. There's no people. There's just kind of overgrown everything. And there are vendors here and there are food scraps. You're gonna find their prey, which is rodents. So this is a wolf snake. We still haven't found the elusive vipers that we're looking for or maybe a crate. That's the one that I wanna find. So let's move on. Here we go. I was hoping to find something a little bit bigger than this maybe, but it's an Asian water monitor. So believe it or not, this little baby we found in this abandoned amusement park. Basically, as soon as we walked in and behind me, there's a little kind of, I guess, puddle of water. There's a uh, rainwater that's been trapped here for years and years. So this guy's probably looking for little tiny mollusks or little tiny fish or whatever he's eating out here. And he's super duper tiny and super duper cute. And we just kind of picked him up. But believe it or not, this animal is going to get well over six feet in all likelihood. Now, I'm not sure if it's a male or a female. It doesn't really matter. We're not collecting her. I picked her up off the ground so I could show her to you. But I have a feeling that if you keep on watching in Thailand, we're going to find some that are even bigger than this. So I'm going to release this guy exactly where I found him. And, uh, and we should give him a name. What should his name be? Dave. Name him Dave. Gus Gus? Hector. Hector? Wait, do we have a Hector? We have already? a Hector. Um, we haven't had a girl name. So Stella the water monitor, I think it's time for you to go. Uh, we're just gonna take a little a few shots of you, maybe some pictures, and then uh, you're gonna be on your way. All right, Stella, it's been nice knowing you, sweetheart. Ooh. There you go, sweetheart. And there she goes. Look at her swim. She looks like a little alligator. She's so cute. I know we can get it. There it is. Goodbye. So we found that pit viper last night and I think it's really cool that they're kind of just crawling all over the place here and it is spicy down here and the mosquitoes are unreal. But this is a white lip viper. It is green and it has that red tail just like we talked about last night. The reason is because it's gonna use it as a caudal lure. So it's gonna make it kind of wiggle around and it's gonna be eating its prey because the prey is gonna be attracted to it like a lure. So we're gonna let this guy go. We found him just kind of on the ground in a clump of leaves, like just off of the ground rather, on one of the sticks. That's where they sleep during the day because this is a nocturnal animal. So he's gonna be coming out in about two hours, but until then, I'm gonna release him. So let's go find a nice branch for him, maybe somewhere over here, a vine, and we'll put him where he belongs. And that to me 
is the most fun thing about handling these snakes is you get to touch them and hold them or hold them from a distance when it comes to venomous snakes like vipers. Although they're not gonna kill you, they're definitely gonna ruin your day and you're gonna have necrosis in your finger or your face or wherever they bite you. But you get to put them back at the end of the day where they belong. That's the way I like to hunt snakes. No point of killing them. Make sure that they proliferate the species and the way you do that is putting them right back where you found them and breaking branches in your face. I'm getting eaten alive. Let's get the heck out of here. This was one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. Uh, we're almost done. We're kind of walking out of here because we're getting eaten alive. And we found the thing that I came here to see, a Malayan crate. Malayan crates are in a lapid. Now with most lapids, their bites are pretty serious. None more serious than this snake, probably. Now a cobra is gonna dump a ton of venom into you. If it's gonna be a spitting cobra, especially a king cobra, but when it comes to crates, the survival rate is very, very low. You're gonna wanna get to hospital immediately, but either way, it's gonna be a bad, bad time. The difference is if a Malayan crate bites you, there's gonna be no localized swelling, it's not gonna hurt, you're not gonna put ice on it, or you probably won't need to or even know that you need to if you don't realize it. If you get bit by a king cobra, you're gonna know. There's gonna be pain, localized swelling, bleeding, and that's why crates are so dangerous too. A lot of times they'll crawl into somebody's house or someone's tent, bite them when they're sleeping. They don't even realize what's happening until it's basically too late. Now this is anecdotal of course, and there's a bunch of different ways not to get bit, such as respecting it by using a zoom lens and getting the heck out of there because they're gonna bite you if you get too close. Respect crates, but this is one of the cooler species I've ever found. And here in Bali, I think we're wrapping it up. What a great trip. This trip really was a dream come true. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by hitting a like, hitting subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. A special thanks to Bali Reptile Rescue for showing us an amazing time around the entire island. We'll definitely be back to Indonesia. And a special thanks to Ayala Naro who filmed almost everything that you see if I'm not holding the camera, she is. And to you, the viewer, who makes this all possible. If it wasn't for you, I could never make amazing content like this. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get the Thailand videos extra early, you get discounts on merch and so much more. And that's it. That's Bali, Indonesia. See you next week.